space cats, what are we doing today? A few of my lovely subscribers have asked me about art room hacks. How to keep your space tidy, how to keep it usable, how to stop yourself going mad because you can't find stuff. So here I am on the 22nd of December, Christmas week, in a miserable day, tidying my studio. I would normally bring you videos on drawing and publishing, but today I'm going to talk about the typical idea of an artist. Someone who works in chaos, they don't know where anything is, there is paint everywhere. Is that what you think of when you think of an artist? I think that sort of work environment is only going to bring you one thing, stress. It's important to have creative hygiene so that when you want to put your mitts on something, maybe a particular pen or some chalk pastels, you know where it is. You haven't got to search for it for half an hour and in the meantime, your creative muse has evaporated. How annoying. So here are my top tips for keeping your space grooving. You can get these little tubs from the homeware department of a shop. I think I got mine in Home Bargains and they're really for going into the fridge for putting your um, bottles or your cans in. But I find these work brilliantly for putting your pens in because it keeps them flat so it, it keeps the ink sort of at, a, at an even level right the way through and you can see what colour you are looking for really really easily so this this is the best thing that I've found to keep my pens all tidy and I've got lots of different varieties so I keep um, uh, colours in the same sort of area but also things like sharpies together, staedlers together, um, highlighters together and I find that works really well for me Next up, washi tapes. Now this has worked okay for me all year, but as you can see, it is getting in a bit of a muddle. So I had a bit of a brainwave and I decided to cut myself a piece of this galvanized wire and then bend it into a big circle. Then you can just bend the ends over and clip them together like that. And then you can just feed all your, your washi tapes onto that. I, I've seen other people do, um, do different things with them, like put them on a, uh, a sort of doweling rod. But the thing is with that is you can't easily take it off of the, uh, the rod to measure how much washi tape you're going to need for a page. So I figured this was a really easy way because you can move, it, move them all around that that wire very easily and then unclip it at the top and take out the one that you want um, and also hang, hang it up on the wall or somewhere useful so that you can see all of them together. A little bit of a, uh, a caveat here though was that I didn't cut off enough of the wire the first time round so when I discovered that I wasn't going to be able to fit all of those on I cut myself a bigger piece and did it slightly differently and the piece there that I uh, that I cut off I'm not throwing it away I'm going to use it in the garden so if you've got one that you want to put on all you do is you feed them all the way around to where you need to put that one in if you want to keep them in the sort of colour order of course you can just chuck them on any old how but there it's easy as that and then all you need to do is find somewhere to hang it up and display. I like to keep all of my favourite books together and I found this old Australian cheese box. I wonder what that was in a previous life. So I keep all of the ones that I want to read frequently or refer to in this box right there on my worktop so that I know where they are should I require to have a look at them. In the summer when I had my massive sort out of my studio, I put all of my books in a sort of size order and colour order, which looks really cool. But the only trouble is, is when I'm searching for a particular book, it's really hard to find because I have to remember what colour it was in on the spine. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to stick with this or not. It's very aesthetically pleasing, but it can be a bit annoying if you're looking for something in particular but you can't find it. Ah! 
And these are all my sketchbooks that I had for last year when I was making Blooming Marvellous. And then all my paintbrushes and my pencils together. I've got that mug from uh, when we went to see Harry Potter World and the vase on the left hand side my sister made in about 1965 maybe something like that. Uh, sadly she died in 74 so it's something that I treasure. And a bunch of my dad's old paints. Now when he passed away I had uh, a lot of excess paint tubes and all sorts of things and uh, some really great things as well. So what I've decided to do with these is take them out of that plastic box and actually keep all of the all of the uh, the smaller paint tubes in this box together so that I can see them more easily because otherwise they're just stored away in my uh, my main chest with all my papers in which I'll show you in a bit and I never get to really look at it so I'm getting all of these out some of them are so old that they've got a bit glued up and stuck together but um, I'm actually just going to sort of try and work my way through them because there are loads of colours in here that I haven't actually got in my pans. Um, if you've seen any of my painting videos you'll know that I do actually prefer to use the, the pans, the solid paint, rather than the tubes but I do use tubes sometimes for very particular colours and now I've got all of these out I think I'll probably end up using them quite a bit more. And this is the tub that I've had left over from the washi tapes so uh, I shall use this one for the paint and then think of something else for the other one. Now on to something that is going to make my sister-in-law for you, Min. She was chucking this three-tiered little container thingy out and I, when I went to see her I said, oh, can I have that? So I've pinched it, I've brought it home, I've given it a quick clean and now I'm going to give it um, a once over with some decoupage paper. So I went down to my local art shop and I bought three sheets and all I'm doing is I'm just giving it a quick going over with some watered down PVA glue and um, the, the paintbrush I'm using is actually one for, for oils, not a watercolour brush because watercolour brushes are too delicate for this sort of job. So if you've got um, either a, a stiff brush like for decorating or something like that or an oil painting brush then that's fine for using. Just make sure that you do wash, wash your brush out when you've uh, when you finish putting the glue on otherwise it'll ruin the brush and the good thing about doing this doing it this way and making it quite watery is that you can move that paper around quite easily it doesn't get you know glued stuck on um, really really well when you first put it down so you can maneuver it and you just need to smooth out any of those little air bubbles and snip down into the corner make sure you take a V shape out and then that will help you to get around those corners. So cut a snip up and then two little triangles to make that V shape. Make sure you've got enough glue, enough of that wet PVA uh, on both sides and it should stick pretty well. And this hides it all sorts of multitude of sins like if you can see on that second one down there's a little chip out of it so it's good for hiding things like that and once it's all you've got it all in place you can go over the top of the paper with some more PVA just to uh, kind of set it and also to keep it a little bit waterproof not not waterproof enough that you'd be able to go swimming with it let's be sensible but waterproof enough that if it's a bit damp in the air it's not going to ruin it. I love an old suitcase and you can pick these up really really cheaply in charity shops. And some of them are beautiful, look at the inside of that one. This is the one that I keep all my mugs in um, which are in my shop if you want to have a look at mugs but I also keep dress up clothes and some of my puppets in the other two. Now this is going to be a bit of a job. Oh look at that. This cupboard is where I keep my paper and on the bottom shelf I've got my artwork for all of the book projects that I've ever done and it's in a right state even though I have actually tidied it up once this year. The thing about paper is you really do need to keep it flat 
So it's a great idea to try and keep your things like your copier paper together. So I've got copier paper there already in the cupboard and this paper that I'm sorting out here is the premium paper. And then that is my archive paper that I use for printing out my the, the prints that I my art prints. And good old staples, it just shows you how long I've had that for. Staples have been out of business for a good couple of years. And then my watercolour paper, also I need to keep together cartridge, big, big cartridge paper and my watercolour paper. I'm going to keep all of that together in a nice flat place. Watercolour paper is expensive, so you need to look after it. It needs to be in a dry place, it needs to be flat and it needs to be somewhere where you're not going to damage it and keep, keep uh, moving it around. And then I've got envelopes on the right hand side there so I'm keeping all of that separate from the paper that I know I'm going to be uh, needing to use for painting. Down the bottom there you can see on that bottom shelf I've got masses of uh, projects that I've done previously so I've got uh, layouts and I've got um, actual artwork in there so it's a really important thing to keep together with also my proofs and I keep my my uh, books of paper as well like that marker paper and I've also got some pads of watercolour paper that I'm going to keep together in that space and that little blue box there that's got all of my proofs in which proofs are one of the exciting things that happen that comes through the post when um, when I first see my book come together as an actual book rather than as separate pieces of work, artwork or, or, um, or bits of writing. It's the most exciting part of writing a book I think is when you see it all come together and it comes through the post and there you have a proof. So I'm just going to lump all these together so that I know where they all are because recently I was searching for something from Vincent and the Vampires to show you for one of the episodes I was doing for my second Vincent book that's in the uh, there's a playlist uh, of my next project called Make a Picture Book and I couldn't find the thing that I was looking for so it's a really good time of year to just pull everything out sort it into piles and make sure I know where everything is back to that three tiered cabinet that my sister-in-law gave me I've put the same paper on the top and bottom and then a different one in the middle and this is going to house some of my pens and some other things like uh, my stickers and things I need for card making. Most of this stuff um, are things that I probably use if I'm doing library visits or sometimes school visits but I haven't had much use for that this year sadly. Hopefully next year will bring a bit more cheer as far as that's concerned. And then right at the top there I've just used a few containers. They're actually those paper things that uh, you use for putting plants in that decompose in the garden but they're the right height for that that little tray and I've just clumped together some pencils so that they look really nice all together and this is what it's finished up looking like. So Laura if you're watching this thank you very much for saving this for me um, I think it looks really good what do you think? And here's a final whiz round the left hand side of my studio which is where all the funky arty crafty things happen. On the right side is where all my computers are so that's looking a bit boring at the moment. Maybe I should do that over at some point. But I think this looks really kind of cute and usable for all of the things I'm going to need it for in the coming months. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. And that covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, 
as well as several tutorials on illustrating your book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go. I wouldn't say my workspace is perfect. It is definitely a work in progress. It's the things that are helping me keep my workspace tidy and usable. But if you have any good ideas, then please do comment below because it might be helping someone else or me overcome a difficulty that they or I am having. Don't forget to subscribe if arty things float your boat. I'll be posting weekly drawing videos and videos on how to self-publish. Next time I'll be painting a new picture for the banner that goes across the top of my YouTube channel for 2021. I'm off to Donka Donkey. I'll see you next time. Nanu Nanu!